Have you seen the new kid around yet? Her parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Kerr and a perennial harvest. And the other is working for Ares Valentine. You might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. I hope not, that's not the voice I've given you. Can't say I know anything about the old warehouse. But empty hives don't stay empty for long. So you're saying it would make sense for someone new to start using the warehouse? Nature abhors a vacuum. I see you have something for me? Yeah, Gren had some jam I'm supposed to give you. Ah yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me! How old are you? Twelve? Perfect, follow me. Who are you? Hey, what a crazy coincidence! Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. This calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight! My dad passed away in an accident at the f An accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Nelly won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. Perennial Harvest just made her their newest lead researcher of deep engineering. If there's a juicy secret, you gotta tell me. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah! I expect you to return that suit in working order. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. What if that's actually our gran? <laughs> it is! There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Around six years ago, Sharper Valent- Oh, that's when our father died! Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water, or air, or soil. Nobody knows. But all the crops died. They even put us up in hotels one town over for a week while they decontaminated the groundwater. Can I do any more, uh... Can I do any more memory fishing? No. Look at gently good for Yeah, well. Sorry, Dad. I'll see you later. In my memories. Mission control, here we go. Raleigh's gonna be upset that I've brought a friend, a new friend. It's about time! I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rollo. I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. Oh, he's actually being very chipper about it. Waggled his head with pride. You'll find we spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks! Hey Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah? While I was waiting, I made some... Improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. Pulling up the ladder, very good. What was he doing? <laughs> Rollo's kind of a genius. He's like a genius engineer. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. Rollo's so smart! Oh, I'm picking up junk. What is throw at the bullseye? I miss. <laughs> it's like a... I have to do like a... A shooting test before I can come in. Okay. Oh, this one moves! Rollo was the best friend an adventurous kid could ever have. Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. <laughs> junk food for junk. Nice. So that's, that's why we know Jeff. <laughs> so, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Okay, Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine warehouse. Um... Luca sucked in a long breath. Sorry, I don't understand. No, Google, it's not all about you. You don't need to understand, just, just listen. Enjoy the story. Like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. And it could have been a woman? How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. That's intense. 
No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Harris Valentine meeting with Gran, wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Let out a low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit-chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your Gran, in the same suit, talking to Eris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Brillo and Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude, aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your Gran and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my Gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask Gran was wearing wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your Gran is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your Gran isn't from here. No, she came a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Did you know your Gran before? Not really, no. It's been years since I'd seen her. Oh my god. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your Gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. Luca, your Gran is hiding something. Pa always says, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. Locked closet, where we're not allowed to look. If my Gran really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Gran's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Are we not going to tell them about the meeting we overheard between Gran Chapter and six. the others? Her friends? The, cons the other conspirators? Secret lair. Summer forged ahead, Leia spelt with a Y. Interesting. only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Hmm. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. And again, no gran. What time is it? I forgot how cute our little DJ is. Go put a sweater on, it's cold out. Good lad. I really want to poke around in the mysterious cupboard. But fine. Rollo, what on earth is that? Hmm? That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. If I were a Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Hold on. I want to I feel left out. I want to join in. <laughs> Me and Rollo, we're on the same wavelength for a lot of things. Rollo flung open the cabinet with co- Aha! He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think, hmm? Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rollo. Dread! It may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to Ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Gran doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So, maybe it stands to reason we should check there first? No dice. It's locked. 
well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought? I am going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush. True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Three of us can reach it. All right, Rollo. This is your time to shine. Ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed Before with... Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rollo's back. <laughs> Excuse me a second, Rollo. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good luck pick. And every good luck pick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. <laughs> Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Damn. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh hey. Let me just yank on this random teacup Speck and... pulled on one of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. You're kidding. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. How did Gran... This is the... Of course, I'm so stupid. This is the only piece of furniture she brought with her. Well, so she built some sort of secret thing? Seems like your Gran has been doing some remodeling. How did Luca not notice that, though? Dude, only two types of people have secret layers. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So, which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. How did... There's like a basement here. How did Luca not notice that happening? Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. He's right. A man's right. Much as it pains me to take off my detective hat, I can hear better with my headphones on. Just as it is getting colder as they approach summer in the game, it is getting warmer as we approach winter here, and I must remove my jumper. Hold the twists and turns of life. Right, I'm ready. <laughs> now I'm ready. Okay. Um, what do we have here? Barrels marked Caution Explosive and Jam Jars? Oh, I think we're about to find out what she's been delivering. That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? Oh my god, can we use incendiary in the fish pond? She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Lolo casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Huckleberries? She smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar. And... Ink? What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Aha! Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Miss Fratelli. A grand jam gram? <laughs> Last night I used the disguise Ares provided to scout the location. The suit. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Oh man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So more a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. <laughs> okay, we kind of knew that she was, you know, sending out notes or whatever via the jam jars. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Is that his dad? What do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded, 
and caress the label with his thumb. Well, are you gonna read it? I... Here, let me help. Carlo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as these are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of the preeminent scholar in dense documents and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed, holding up a monocle. Ah, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on the lab results from Joseph. Looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy! Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Polo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. And through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Nolo rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be Luca more. frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean? Enough is enough. How did he take matters into his own hands? I think that we might be on the cusp of finding out why he died. This is bullshit! Slam the drawer shut. Oh, Luca. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your gran a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My mom, my, my moms are both on here. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim! We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. I think that's fair. Is there a little... <laughs> this is a little punch bag. Is that for Gran to keep up her fitness? That's weird. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rollo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. There's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow it... carefully trace the path with his finger. It leads right he to... down at the end point. The warehouse? Oh, town square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Rollo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over there. So it's not hiding treasure. Real bummer. Rollo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival! Oh. <laughs> gulp. Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival! Not if we stop her. Uh, what was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was what? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs! Quiet! Hit the lights! Beck 
flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Did we find a hiding spot? Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. Ah! The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Gran? Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Oh, oh that looks like, um... A final few footsteps reached the entrance of I've forgotten his name again. And the voice now echoed down the stairs. Oh, oh, oh. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Thump. Yoo-hoo! Not here to hurt anyone. I'm just here to help. Just... At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Huh? Guess it's nothing. shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rollo! Don't. It was too late. Rollo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Rollo, why? Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rollo tackled the man to the ground. Rollo? Hey. Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I didn't know if I had it in me, but there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rollo, that was awesome. Wait, did you just kill that person? Lucas scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. Okay, good. You sure clobbered and good, Rollo. He's knocked out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver? Yeah, Tolliver. Chapter Hiram seven. Tolliver. The interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. Amazing. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. This is very convenient, actually, because he was the, um... He was the most conspicuous of the whole group. With his, like, thanks for the jam! So... I feel like now is the time to... I feel like we're, we've done Rollo detective mode. I'm going to take my half. <laughs> One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. We're going to get some information. what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop. <laughs> They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> I'll handle this. Just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Golly, I sure got my bell he rung. over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rollo just got a little startled. Rollo's here? Rollo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, alright. Mistakes happen. You kids gave old Hiram a good scare. Let's just get me out of this rope, these ropes and call it even. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my gran up to? If you'll just cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can Mr. trust you? Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. And since your gran moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just, all this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town. An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient Luca notes. gestured to the corner. Barrels of explosives? I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca looked again to Rollo and Beck. 
This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. <coughs> this will all make sense in time. imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. Mm. You see, this town has secrets. A very dark past, Before indeed. Before the kids even notice his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. Bastard! A past that he must be brought punctuated his final to... words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Oh. Light! Dramatic motherfucker. Son of a- darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down Mr. here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there. And let the adults handle this. They looked this. bewildered at each other. Play it cool, huh? Not now, Beck. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. I knew good cop, chill cop wouldn't work. <laughs> the kids looked down in resignation. Shit. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. No. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. Bugger. Well, we certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. You're right, Back I to know. The board. All right. Okay, so we need a new option. I guess we can go back to do the trees rumble. Um, yeah, that's our only the trees rumble. <laughs> the clouds rumble. That's our only uh, different choice at this point. Luca began to respond the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. Sure we can make it home before the storm kicks in? The kicks off? I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break for it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Oh my god. Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch a cold. Luca, Nelly will keep trying to reach your gran on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in the boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. I mean, we're gonna need good cop, bad Luke cop, aren't we? So we need something bad. The microscope. We need to find something bad. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the stru structural integrity of gum with increased amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 days. Luca wiped his hand off on a sweater and gave a nervous laugh. <laughs> it's weird. Back I know. Down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Luca's a sweetie. Oh wow. Rollo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Fitted it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech overcompensation. Flicked at one of the toggles. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Ah, oh, shucks. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent. Good cop, pungent cop. <laughs> he flipped open the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry. Was this from your old school? The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards. Some did flowers. When they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you moved a lot. Yeah, that's the thing with having a brilliant parent. There's always a better job somewhere else. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. 
That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them, is all. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Wow. Dang, that didn't that hurt? I'll be honest. That hurt more than I expected. <laughs> well, at least you look cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rollo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Um, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at a problem. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet. But one thing my dad told me when I was little. Don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. If you try to hold it all in, you're gonna pop. So then, what do you do? When you don't know what to do. Dad never got to that part. Something I figured out on my own, though. You gotta do something. Anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We're gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe! Stop jerking me around! I just want things to go back to the way they were! Everyone tells me it's gonna be alright, that things are gonna change. Let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. For the benefit of headphone users, I will not be doing the feral scream. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town! Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks! I hate it! I hate that I hate it! Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? I just want to be a normal kid. There. Wow, I actually feel a little better. Thanks. I needed that. Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. That was adorable. See you and Rollo at the festival? Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe jerk you around. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in.